G'day, Tragedy King, and welcome back to Pathfinder, Rise of the Rune Lord, blah, 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 and it is deck building time. We just completed the Elven Entanglement, and I can't touch anything with a mouse because I'm too busy drinking my coffee. Oh, yeah. The Black Death. Okay, we completed the Elven Entanglement, and we drew our weapons and spells. I actually think, in retrospect, drawing the spells wasn't a particularly good idea because uh, most of the spells are actually basic in the opening set. Uh, the weapons are far more interesting. There's far more interesting uh, high high skill weapons in the opening set. So drawing a Viper Strike and a Detect Demon was just annoyed me, basically. <laughs> Okay, let's uh, let's do the deck building. Yumblemo! And let's fetch all the heroes. Also, something interesting is... Let me just place these cards out. I was absolutely sick of, like... Uh, see this thing here? These promo cards are kind of hard to get. To get the iconic hero cards, you actually need to buy the figurines... For the RPG and they came as like a bonus like as a promo card and they're pretty difficult to find and this like this one for example is like a photo taken on by someone's phone which they used to sell the card on eBay that's where this came from and it looks terrible so this and this one here which is not much better it's a lot better but it's still pretty bad and uh the goblin skull down here basically i rebuilt these all nice and i mean let's, let's just look at the difference between that and that unrecognizable one's awesome and one's not awesome basically i just uh, built these up in photoshop so i i am not going to redo the whole set obviously uh just any cards that I think are unusable when I'm personally playing, I will update the mod with a homemade version just to get the, the card, you know, in a usable situation. And also I did the same thing with uh, this. <laughs> this, uh, this terrible, terrible, terrible cohort scan. Okay, whatever. The point is... I've replaced a couple of these cards with nice new fancy versions of themselves. Okay, anyway, enough of that. Let's uh, let's get into the actual deck building. The deck building, I was pretty happy with the majority of it. We don't get Cecil the Uprooter. He did nothing in our last game. We didn't even use him. Uh, but obviously, Dohan gets his mount and she gets her wolf thing that's her cohorts and then we're just going to do the blessings so i thought that having the blessings of baphomet for kaira really worked well these guys let you anyone on their first exploration of the turn you can give them two dice and you can give them one dice any other time I always have her at the back of the party as the last person to take a turn. So that means there's four chances, not including herself, for her to use this on a first draw, you know, and I, in, during a single round. I really like that being at the back and just being able to help everyone. So I think it really worked well. So we're going to give her all the Baphomets again, which means she gets another two cards. she has six okay and there's only a couple more interesting uh blessings now so we're going to give this one to you and this one to you this allows you to do uh arcane and divine checks so fix them up and also we're going to give this one which gives extra punching in the face power we're going to give that to uh This bloke, he gets three more. Okay, and now everyone just gets basic blessings. So she gets another three. 
he gets four, she gets four, and I guess she gets another... Okay, I think I've given someone too many blessings. Yeah, book, and you bang. Okay, we'll just check that. Right, so we're going to do weapons now, and again, a lot of the weapons are predetermined for my last game. He's going to get his iconic one, she's going to get her iconic one, he's going to get the improvised dinosaur. We're also going to give him the lance now. And this is going to change his deck quite a lot because listen to this, uh, blah, 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 get some D8 and everything. But on this check, you may reveal a card that has the mount trait to ignore the two-handed trait of this card. If you do this on the first combat check of the turn, add another 1D8 to your check. So I reckon that's pretty awesome. Now, he's already got one mount with his cohort. He has uh, two, what, uh, three allies and we're basically going to stack his hand with uh, riding horses, which are mounts, for him to be able to use that ability very, very easily and just explore the location when not using it. That's like four cards out of his deck are going to trigger this thing. And using that, comboing that with... Uh, Ooh, this happens a little... I have to figure out why... See how that card is underneath? Sometimes that happens. I'm not quite sure why that happens. I have to figure that out. It's probably happened here as well. No? Nope. Okay. Well, it, it happened there. Anyway, the point is... Uh, this guy, he can actually peek at the top of the deck. Which means she can peek at the deck with this. Right? And then he can move anywhere using Dohan. And be able to hit that first you know, attack with the lance and get that extra die. That's going to be awesome. So awesome. I kind of, again, wish that I'd gone with Hask, who has an automatic peak. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me, oops, press the wrong button. Now, she doesn't have weapons. She's going to have the... Uh, She's, that's the longbow we're not using anymore. Boink. We've got the replacement one that I made. Okay, so we've got some pretty cool uh, fancy weapons here. We have the crossbow. So discard for a D10. And you can discard to add D4 to other people's locations. We've also got the composite bow, which is the strength die. And that is a D6. So that's a uh, range of a d6, but you can discard this one to add your strength die to another person's attack. So that adds a d6. So this, I think, is a lot better than this one. So we're going to give it that. Also, uh, it's just that this, uh, where is it? Uh, this thing here, right, is really cool because it allows you to, you can actually recharge another ranged card to get a d8 on your attack so that, that's range skill plus d6 plus a d8 if you're holding two ranged the other option is i thought i might try out the javelin with her so you get range skill plus two d6s and you can banish it for another two d6s and it's basic so i can just get it back in my hand every single time so i'm actually going to give that a go with her yoink so that's going to be her third one. Okay, back to here. Give her a mace, give him a ma her a mace, and give him a mace. And that's all his weapons done. Give him the staff. Give her the sword breaker. Now, I didn't really like the sword breaker, but I still think that evade is actually kind of cool. Discard this card to evade a monster whose highest difficulty defeat is less than 11, plus twice the scenario's adventure deck number. I, I do like this. I think this is going to come in more handy later on. I don't want to lose this card. It's a veteran card. We can't replace it just at a whim because it's not basic. So I'm going to keep this in the deck, even though I had this in my hand almost the entire last game. I never used it because, you know, she's rolling with a horrible d6 for strength so this is actually only giving her a, a d6 plus a 
d4 minus 1. So it's no good for actually attacking anything. Okay, whatever. Uh, what's next? She, so he gets uh, long spear, long spear, and a quarter staff. That's his five. She's got three. She's got three. Oh, he got four. So I'll give him the sword as well. I'll give her a sword as well. She has two, two, none, none, five, five, two. So she has another two. So I'll give her a pickaxe. I don't have any more. I guess another pickaxe. Definitely need another weapon to go with her. Okay, so that's that, I think. Okay, we're going to do armor next. Uh, so she is light. He's heavy. Have, uh, he's light actually he looks like he's heavy but he's light can't wear armor at all heavy and heavy so we're mainly heavy armor here we're going to give the full plate to Alan we're going to give the magic scale to Kyra we're going to give the paladin's helm of course to our paladin and we're going to give the magic shield to Kyra uh, yeah and we're going to give the magic padded armor to crow plus a stalking armor now that's because we've only given him two-handed weapons so he can't use anything else we'll give him a helm and we'll give him a wooden shield and she gets a stalking armor she only gets one armor so i think that's done for armor so one one three three two 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 ah oh, wait Oh, I guess she gets a shield and she has one more armor. I'll give her the heavy scale mail. Yoink. Bam. Okay. We're now going to do allies. So for allies, I'm going to give him, he has three allies. I'm giving him three horses. to combo with his lance. Let's go all in on that combo, baby. And now we've got all our fancy guys here. So the caravan guard adds to range, so obviously it goes with her. Demon hunter, I give that to the priest because I like the thematics of it. Mastiff, I give this to our paladin so she can draw more cards. And this guy does not get any allies, if I remember right, no. I'm gonna give this to Anora. And I'm just going to hold the retainer for a while because we still have our frogs and our recruits. Now, the frogs allow us to avoid obstacles and traps and stuff, which is awesome. So I want to give a frog to everyone I can. So she gets three allies. So I'm going to give her a frog and a recruit. She, he's got all his allies. She gets two allies, so I'm going to give her a frog. She gets one and she gets two, so I'm going to give her a frog. You know what? I'm going to give them recruits. I'm going to give him a frog. Two horses is enough. Three horses plus the other ones enough, don't you think? Yeah. Okay, I chickened out on that all in on the mounts. Let's check this. Three allies. Three allies. Three frogs. Three allies. No allies. Two allies. One ally. Two allies. Okay, and now spells. Uh, so she gets six. Fiery glare. Plus all those, yoink, just giving her force and frigid. We have fireblade and we have fireblade. We also have a cure. 
we're going to give a cure to Sheila the Paladin and we're giving a cure to Crow and I'm giving burst bonds to our Paladin she gets three spells he gets no spells she gets two spells so What spells do we have that we haven't used? I think I'd like to get some of these things here. It's charisma check. So I'm going to give glibness to him. He gets two spells. Three, three, one, one. So he gets another two spell. So I'm going to give her Sage City and brilliance oh, she only gets two spells what's sage city again that is wisdom checks that's intelligence checks yeah so i'll just give it to give her sage city so that should be right two two none two two six six three three one one and finally we have items okay we'll start with the fancy ones your blamo this is hers she also has this ring which is a magic item this combos so it allows you to pick up boons that have magic traits and she's got spells she's also got this ring nice this raven thing, you saw that combo with the staff he has. He's got that awesome staff that uh, you can actually just send it to people and they can automatically succeed at dexterity checks, which gets past a lot of barriers. So that is awesome. I'm going to give the skull bomb to Alan. We still haven't used this. <laughs> We've had it in our deck, but... Two scenarios now. Wait, did I use that? I'm sure I used this. No, I didn't use this. Oh, I was going to use it, but I didn't. Oh, no, that's right. I used it in the first scenario on that, and there's that location that says that if you have to discard a card, like banish a card as part of its cost of using it, you can ignore it. That's why. Anyway, the point is we've still got this skull, which is unusual <laughs> for not having a goblin in our team. Okay, and now we've got these awesome healy things here. These things, now that I understand how damage works a little better, it's very interesting, this uh, Blood Parapet, because it's discard this card to reduce damage dealt to you by three. Doesn't say combat damage, doesn't name the damage type. This means it covers all damage types, fire, poison, everything. So, boom, this is very cool. And it can be recharged using Constitution. So this guy here has constitution. This guy here is constitution eight, constitution six. Constitution eight. So she definitely gets one. So yeah, I think I'm just going to give it to her and give it to him. And then I've got all the sages journals, which I thought were very useful. Plus the holy water grenade goes to our priest because it's got the divine trait on the actual item, just gives it an extra card that she can use to power heals. So she gets two items. So let's give her a sage journal. He gets two items, give him a sage journal. He gets two items, give him a sage journal. Oh, he only gets two. Yeah, I actually think I'm gonna give him that and him that. So that's because basically I like sending this guy to the guardhouse. I know because I had a peak. I usually play pretty blind, but I know because I had a peak. The next quest uh, also has the guard post, which is that place where you constantly got to fight that soldier like we did in the last one. So I'm going to, he was crushing it, so I'm going to give him the Sage's Journal as well. Just give him an extra D4 for all those attacks. Okay, so we need 
one more item for her. She gets one item, so she's done. She gets one item, so she's done. She gets three items. She gets two items. Two items, I've given him three. Two items. She gets two items. Oh, see how it's going underneath the deck there? I have to figure out what's going on there. Okay, so now I just need to work out what I'm going to do. This girl needs another one item. Potion of striding, I guess. Let's just have a quick look at the... I'm going to give her the codex. This thing here just allows you to add one to a die to a check to acquire a boon, and that's pretty much it. And you can do an intelligent knowledge check, which is a d6 to get 10, so it's pretty uh, pretty useless. You know, maybe I should give it to her. Yeah, I'll give her the boon. I'll give her a second sage's journal. Uh, it seems like a waste. Yeah, stuff it. Two, two, two sages journals. Why not? Bam. Okay, so that is the end of that. Okay, so I'm just going to save these decks now. And I'll be ready to do the next adventure. And the next adventure should be going quicker, I think. Now that I've got a bit of a handle on the game a bit, I've sort of remembered how to play again. I think I might just, uh, you know, what's the word? Go a bit faster. Hopefully I won't make any more mistakes. Also with the new, with the, this is an older version of the mod. In this version of the mod, you've got to place these tokens on the board in the new version. Uh, you don't have to. They just they just grab them from anywhere on in the entire game world, so you don't have to worry about where the standees are placed. Boom. And that is that. Okay, so I now have my decks. They're ready to go. I'm just going to save this as B03 YouTube and save this to my pack directory, your blammo. Okay, that's that. I will see you guys. Ooh, what's going on here? That's that. I will see you guys next time.